Today, more and more people are struggling. I've never seen anything like this before, in fact. And yet, at the same time, there are people out there with more money to spend than I've ever seen. I'm going to show you some absolutely wild examples. Wild examples. What about dogs on airplanes, $6,000 a ticket for something called Bark Air? You heard me correctly. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. In today's video, we're going to look at this grand disparity, this wealth gap. And I think it's a problem because what we could have here is class warfare that ignites some level of civil unrest in the United States, in Canada, in parts of Europe. We could see that in Australia and New Zealand, so many other places. This shouldn't happen, but of course it does. And this usually comes to a head at some point. We're not quite there yet, but the struggle that people are feeling, let me tell you, it's real. You not only have inflation pressures now, but also higher interest rates and fuel prices at 359 on average. People are going to drive less, they're going to spend less, and they have less money in their pockets. Um, we're talking about Target in this case here, just basically saying that people are looking for better deals, and they're, he's talking specifically about the customers of Target. And what they have done is cut the prices of, I believe it was 5,000 different items in their store. When they're cutting the prices, there could, could be done in a few ways. What, what they could do is they can go back to their suppliers, go back to their vendors, and basically say, you know how we are buying that? Well, what if we bought a larger quantity? Could we save some money? Or we're not going to buy that from you anymore unless it's at this price. Then they could bring that back to their customers and say, look, we dropped the price for you. But really, it was probably on the supplier side. I think people better be aware of that, okay? That's how it works. Maybe they cut in some areas. There's certainly possible. But I have a feeling that it's on the other end. That's speculation. This is just showing you same store sales are down and have been for the last four months, it looks like. And the, the trend, by the way, has been several months down. Okay, we could see that trend going in and why because people have had enough it looks like it but you look at this opposing information i don't just show you one it's kind of odd but consumers are so demoralized by inflation and high rates that they've given up on saving for the american dream and are just spending money i think to some degree that could be true but i would have to say that they're just spending a lot more money but not getting more, actually they're getting less, right? Because we have inflation, we have shrinkflation, we have people that don't have any savings. So you add all these things up and it's kind of like, okay, not exactly what I was hoping for, right? Retailers use police-like investigation centers to fight theft. You see what's happening here? This is crazy. It's so, there's so much, this is talking about organized crime going on inside the store um but it, it's so extreme so extreme to see all of this um they're just talking about home depot they all go in they swarm it of course the employees can't do anything about it they just take and then uh i guess that would be they'd be given you know how based on how much they took they somebody pays them the money right there and they keep doing it over and over and over and over again this is the type of thing that happens at the end of an empire. This is the type of thing that happens when we are in the middle of a collapse. It's crazy, but it's going on. My finances were wrecked and I was cutting into my savings. Something that's interesting that happens with food is when you have to regard it with scarcity, it changes the way you cook. And there are a lot of uh, posts on social media about how to save money with the food that you're cooking, where to be shopping to get the right deals. I cover it here too. I talk about the food terminals. I talk about buying in bulk and so on. 
you see that the buyer behaviors are changing, consumer patterns are shifting. Target's rollback is partly a response to customers that are finding more economical alternatives for household staples. Okay, uh, you, you can see that they're just talking about the details of Target. Yes, it's just one store, but the same things going on all over the place. And we see that as a shift. Remember, because I have from the seller's perspective as well with my businesses that um, I can bring you that information that you just can't find from an economist or a wannabe economist. I'm actually on the other side of the equation as well. So keep that in mind. That's the value here that you just can't find uh, elsewhere. While savings have been run down to the lows, there have also been meaningful increase in expensive credit card debt. The outstanding level of credit card debt recently crossed $1 trillion. Looking at the delinquency rate, so delinquency, look at the left-hand side, that has been going crazy, uh, much higher than we have seen in the last decade. Not a good sign. A very bad sign, in fact. That is 90 plus days delinquent. Um, in absolute terms, it's like it's not that much, but when you see the trend, it is, of course, a problem. People don't have savings and they are spending any which way they can. They're taking second jobs. You know that, all right? Now, one at one point, I was working three jobs, that was voluntarily. I did that. Well, there's jobs and businesses. Uh, I did that. Why? Because I figured I'm going to work every single day. And that way, I'll be able to save more so I can invest more. Okay. And that was many, many years ago. Um, I guess I still work every day anyway. But the point is, voluntarily, people are doing this because they have to. How the $17 desk salad won. <laughs> I find everything wrong with that sentence. But anyway, as food prices surge, fast casual has somehow landed in the sweet spot between expensive fast food and bloated restaurants. Ah, uh, my goodness. So the Financial Times journalist tweeted a photo of menu prices at Connecticut McDonald's showing $17.59 for a Big Mac combo meal. This was at a rest stop. But these McDonald's prices are nuts, right? So anyway, the point is prices have increased dramatically. We have seen this and people are just, they're, they're shifting in one way, shape or form. Maybe they're going, they're saying, hey, instead of the McDonald's meal, I'm going to, you know, go over here and get sort of fast food. Maybe they're just going to change their habit. They're going to say, hey, I'd rather get just a better quality food or I'd rather, you know, go to a restaurant instead. They're, they're making changes. So that means that this, they are at the ceiling. That's what I'm trying to highlight here. They are at the ceiling. And I got to tell you, I think you're in the wrong business because Palm Beach Housekeepers are making $150,000 a year due to massive demand from the wealthy. Crazy. Crazy. $150,000 US a year to be a housekeeper. Things have changed. You work where you work and oftentimes you're going to say, what did I get myself into? I thought this was supposed to be a good career. And then this kind of thing happens where people are making money with walking dogs. They're making money as a housekeeper, all these things. And then we get to this. Bark Air launches as first ever airline catered to dogs. We are here to revolutionize flying for dogs, a 100% totally real airline for dogs. Do you want to get in on that? Hey, do you want, do you want to fly up in the air with your dog and pay thousands of dollars for your dog like this is not the weirdest thing i've read there's a lot more odd things going on today certainly i would believe it if it was true the point is there are people today with more money than ever before there are people today that have less than they ever had they didn't recover from the financial crisis and then 2020 came around and they got sledgehammered this is a very real thing. 
for millions of people. What can they do? I've said it before, I'll say it again. First things first, I got playlists on my YouTube channel, how to make money. I've got the, the you know, there's just, just looked in those playlists, okay? I got all kinds of stuff, how to and solutions. I've got everything, okay? Um, there are ways to save money, okay? Yes, there's the obvious ways, you know, you can can and you can preserve and you can, that, that's good stuff. Uh, other things is the food terminal. People don't even know the food terminal exists. It's not available to everybody in all cities, but in many cases, if you know a landscaper or you know somebody who has some sort of food related business, you can get into the food terminal. You can get the food. You got to buy it in big, like a tray at a time, a box at a time, case at a time, but then you could split it. You could split it with your family, your friends, your neighbors. That's one way to do it. Okay. Take advantage of that where you can. You can, you know, talk to the restaurants, ask where their suppliers are. If you know the restaurant well enough, you can maybe say, hey, when you do your orders, if you could order one extra case, I'd be really grateful. I really appreciate that. You've got to get to know these people. Actually go, if you're going to go to your supermarket, you can go and talk to the produce manager, get to know your produce manager. I've been in the back of the supermarket many times because I know the, knew the produce manager so well that you know, I was able to get the reduced produce, I was able to choose what I wanted, all these different things. Look to take advantage of the circumstances where you can. There are many better ways to do that, which is you know, increasing your top line as best you can. That's what I talk about in the Sunday Business Live. I know not everybody wants to start a business, but for those who actually want to accelerate, who actually want to be able to mitigate, you've got to take it to the next level. That's what I, you know, I saw the writing on the wall many years ago and I started taking action immediately. If you wanna know about building an online business, specifically, we, we start with Amazon, then we go on to Walmart, then we go into the retail establishments. That's the way I teach it. I do it, in my opinion, better than anybody else. And uh, I have the Money GPS investment side backing that. So if you wanna be a part of that, there's a link at the top of the description. As always, all I'm asking is that you hit the thumbs up button. Okay, that supports me. It supports this channel. And of course, I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.